This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 413 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network, brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products, Total Saddle Fit, and Fairfield in Lexington. Tonight, we're actually going to have a family member, Reese's sister, on the show. She's going to talk to us about leg yield. We're going to we're going to deconstruct that movement for you this week, and also we've got always got a great trainer tip. This is Reese Koffler Stanfield from Georgetown, Kentucky. And this is Philip Parks from Rockford, Ontario, and you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show with our producer and boss, Glenn. He's come on here to make sure yeah. we stay in line, I think. <laughs> Every, Phil, I gotta what did you show do? up. I gotta show up once a month just to make sure you guys are still working. Phil did something wrong. That's I'm it. blaming it all on Phil. <laughs> That's it, it's Phil's problem. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I, you guys are still here. You can't blame the poor Canadian. We, you miss us. That's, <laughs> that's what happens. You're too big time sometimes to come on, but we love Coach Jen too. So She likes doing the, hanging out with you guys too. I have to give her a fair share. I know. And, and Jen likes, Jen, no offense. We think we, sometimes we hear snoring from Glenn, but Jen is, <laughs> Jen is on it. She loves Jen, the tips. See, the problem is, the, the, the situation is, she actually understands what you're talking about. I have no <laughs> idea. So, I'm just here because I like you guys. Uh, <laughs> oh, we love it. <laughs> hey, love I do it. have well, a couple of announcements here from yeah. the Horse Radio Network. Um, we officially, the Ho- Horse Radio Network Horse Lovers Cruise, which is February 12th of 2018 out of Miami for four nights, went on sale two days ago as we record this. And we already have 30 people that have signed up. Um, we're already almost out of our first block of rooms. So... Well, you definitely, please. if you're thinking about going, want to get a reservation in and put your $200 deposit down. Uh, th- you have until November 20th to pay the rest a- or cancel and get your deposit back. So even if you think you're going to go, like you two, <laughs> you need to get your reservations in and your deposits in. Uh, because I think that she said, with the, all the inquiries that she has, the travel agent, she said, uh, we're going to be out of our first block of rooms, and she's going to have to reserve a new block, and that doesn't guarantee the rate we have now. So uh, if you're thinking about going, just get your de- reservation in and call the travel agent, get the deposit made, and then work out the details later. But it um, just go to horseloverscruise.com. We are, she said... That even the cruise podcasts that do shows about cruising never get this number of people in the first two days. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, so we got to so, get on top of this. You do. So you two can, have to yeah. go. I'm not even giving you a choice. Time. You have to go. I know. <laughs> I, we're so busy right now. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. <laughs> All right. I will call so, and make Reese's reservation for her tomorrow. Yeah. You may just have to just make it for me. Right, I'll take it out of your paycheck yeah. this week. Okay. So we'll just uh, send you the deposit in ourselves. Exactly. We'll make sure you guys uh, okay. go. Uh, but it, and literally for you, you have no excuse. You're going to be in Wellington. You could just drive down the street to the port. So yeah, basically, that's that's what will happen for sure. I mean, you don't even have It'll to be fly anywhere. Be a nice mid-season break for sure. Philip, can, you can go fly in a couple days early. Go give her some lessons, and then you both can go to the port. Uh, be perfect. That's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll need yeah. it. That's that's mid-season, and 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 uh, cranky Reese needs a break right around that time. So and, you know, perfect. it's a Monday through Thursday, so you might not even miss any shows. So oh, really, yeah, it's even a, better. See, guys, I'm getting this info too. Yeah, <laughs> no, even, it, we yes, leave on a Monday perfect. and we get back on a Friday early morning. Uh, so you'd be yes, home by perfect. ten o'clock probably. Um, <clears throat> so it's perfect for you. You can just have your people work the horses all week, and you go drink <laughs> martinis. <laughs> Yeah, the girls. The girls will just shake their head. <laughs> they, they're, thankfully, I have very good girls, and they'll take good care of. Things. At the last day is the pub crawl through uh, Key West, so you'll be hung, good and hung over for Friday morning. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> that sounds like fun. I think Philip and I would enjoy the pub crawl. There's <laughs> no question on that. No. Um, it should be a, it should be a good time, and and we want everybody to join us. You know, we don't make this is costing us money. We're not making any money, but we're doing it because we really want to hang out with our listeners. And who doesn't want to go on vacation with a whole bunch of people that you know or or you meet and get to know the first minute you meet them? Because we're all horse people. So I, I we're and we have a wide variety coming. I just found out. I got to tell you guys about this because she is the coolest. Mary Kitzmiller's coming. You know Mary. She hosts with us um, on the Horses in the Morning show, and she trains all kinds of animals. 
But Dominique, her friend, is coming, and she is a wild horse trainer for the movies. Not a wild horse. She is a wild animal trainer for the movies, and she runs a business oh. called Zebras Are Us. So if you want to buy a zebra pretty much in this country, you go to Dominique. But she also deals in all other kinds oh. of wild animals, and she is the coolest person we've ever met. We met her in California, went to her place, and when we were there... I got to tell you guys the story. When we were in Norco at her place, there was a film crew there that set up for the entire day. They had tents set up. They had all this stuff. And I said, what is it? They filming a movie? Because they had the caterers there, all these guys in suits and all the cameramen. There were like 30 people from the film crew. And she said, no, it's just a 30-second commercial. But she said, they'll they'll film these zebras all day. (laughs) For the 30 seconds. And they were having a lunch break, and they had all this gourmet food, all for a 30-second commercial. And she would have to run the zebras around, and they would tell her, they would tell her, oh, we want that zebra to lead. And there were, she's like, how am I going to tell the zebra to lead? That? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a very specialized uh, career, I suppose. <laughs> She was funny. I'm not gonna, kids, I was not going to lie. I was like, how cute would it be to have a zebra and put my niece and let my niece ride the zebra? I'm I'm just thinking in my mind when you said that. It could be a very big disaster. <laughs> They're not cheap. Oh, they are not cheap. Zebra pony. <laughs> White stripes on a black horse. Oh, and they're pony. still wild animals. Uh, she she makes it clear what you're buying. She, she vets people oh, up. I can't put my niece on a wild beast. That would be bad. <laughs> that would be bad. Yeah. But oh, uh, but you're right. The fantasy's good. <laughs> so. yeah, I was like, that would be so cool with her sparkly pink pad. This was all going through my head when you were having that conversation. She uh, so. she's a really neat. So we got some really interesting characters that are booking to come. Is what I'm saying. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> and then Philip and I. And you, oh, pub yeah. uh, Philip, pub And I did talk really Doctor Wendy character. into coming. He, she, and Kyle are going to come. So and you know what Doctor Wendy's like. She's a party and a half. So I love it. I love yeah. it. Oh, it's gonna be so fun. It'll That's be really a good cool. time. And then uh, we're going to be at Rolex. Speaking of going places, Rolex next week already. Uh, We will be there doing a meetup. We're going to do a meetup at the Gray Goose, which is a restaurant in Midway, which is, what, 10 minutes from the horse park. Um, Yeah, but Midway is important. There's a couple different ones in Lexington. So just remember, Midway. That's important. Gray Goose and Midway. Yeah, GPS it and go to Midway. Now, Midway is a town of about 12 houses, and and, and it's on Main Street. You can't miss it. It's six restaurants. It's six restaurants. It's wonderful. It is cute. It's a cute little town. And this place is great. We have the back room reserved. So anybody that wants to come from Horse Radio Network uh, can come and join us. It'll It'll be a good time. Jamie will be there, and Jennifer will be there, so it should be a lot of fun. And then we're going to meet half an hour before cross country at jump number one, like we always do. We always get a gang there and take pictures, and then we walk the jumps together for a while. And then 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you can come by the Eventing Nation tailgate party. They have free beer, and we're going to be doing trivia to give Hmm. away a bunch of prizes again. So we have a lot going on. Oh, oh, I'm so jealous. Oh, and we are going to put out a couple episodes of Horses horses in the Morning from there. (laughs) So that, that too. That is so cool. I'm so bummed I'm not going to be there, but um, I will be thinking about you guys. Yeah, we, so. we're bummed that you're not going to be there, too, because you're always the yeah. life of the party. Oh, well, I, I have some family stuff going on in New York, so I've got to go there. But I will be thinking about you guys and watching Facebook. And the good thing about Rolex is the best weekend of the year happens every year. So next year. <laughs> Can I bring so, up and my one pocketbook more? is going to be happy. Well, I'm going to be in New York, so yeah, that's not going to help it. You'll be fine. <laughs> Never mind. But theoretically, my more. worst budget, <laughs> because you know, we literally take a whole day and go shopping. And oh, boy, I like have to save up after Florida for, for shopping. So. Hey, uh, Philip, have you ever been out for Rolex? Next no. year. No, it's too next early year. in the year. Yeah. Yeah. It's raining and cold. I like the Derby better. Well, the Derby's it's a one, week later. It's a week later. Huh? Yeah, it's a week later. <laughs> well, you think I can just have uh, multiple weeks to be in Kentucky ha- hanging out? Well, we really like it when you do that. So yeah. <laughs> she could probably we arrange like some uh, We're clinics super down busy there here at the moment. So yeah. yeah, it's a hard time of year for you too. So, mm-hmm. but uh, one other announcement. Excited. One other announcement, real quick, and then I'll let you guys get to the. I know there wasn't much news, so I know I'm not taking up a whole lot of time here. Um, <laughs> the WEG show is going great. The 2018 WEG show with Samantha Clark. Uh, we we have the numbers on that have been skyrocketing over the last couple of weeks. But if you missed the last one, go listen to it. We talked to the director of the Tryon International Center. She's the one that runs the whole place, mm. and mm. She, we asked. We had like 40 minutes with her, asking us listener or asking her listener questions about everything from ticketing to 
to hotels, to restaurants, to food, to the venues. We asked her everything, volunteers. So we answered a ton of those questions. So if you have any questions about going to the WAG for dressage or whatever, then listen to the last 2018 WAG show. It was episode number seven. We answered a ton of those questions, and she was terrific. So uh, we're, we're, And I will be happy to let you guys know that... Uh, the press center is not going to be in a tent in the middle of a rainstorm. Yes. They're building a building that will overlook the two big arenas, and we have the whole wow. top floor. So, and she promised me they were going to put in a radio studio for us too. So, yes, Ooh, nice. That would be so nice. <laughs> yes, please. So, the the press that's usually cool. end up in a tent that's rain soaked and. <laughs> oh, it's usually it's pretty, pretty rough. But I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna rent an RV to go down to Wegg. So. Uh... We I'll have be making stops on the way to be picking up Reese and uh, yeah. we know, have a other listener stragglers on the way. And, we have and a listener down that way. I think that's my idea. Well, that oh, is okay. a, our idea too, by the way, because we have a listener that just bought a property about 15 minutes from Wag, and she has 40 oh. acres. And what we're going to oh. do is set up an HRN campground on her property. Done. So yeah. we have a we have you a Winnie I mean? coming <laughs> to pick Travis and I up. We're excited. <laughs> Philip driving a Winnie. <laughs> it's you like so it? good. I like it. We're ready. We're ready to go. It's wait till be wait till Reese tries to get in that shower. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, you know, I can take one for the tape. It'll be fine. I can. <laughs> I am a horse girl at art. It's fine. Uh, I don't like to camp. I don't like to camp, but in a yeah, Winnie no. at no, the, on at the ground the is where I draw the line. Yeah. <laughs> no, a I mean, I have slept... no problem. I yeah, already looked I at the uh, one here. There's wa- a water in the wash stall. I I've found a 35 foot one we can rent here. So I picked the oh, biggest okay. one. I'm going to drive it up there. <laughs> yeah, but you're coming the opposite direction, then. That's what can help us. <laughs> I like well, it. I like other it. people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, I'm done taking up your show. <clears throat> uh, well, we're going to get to it. But um, this week uh, is, is actually talking about Tryon. There is a CDI three star at Tryon this uh, week. And that kind of gets everything started. There's been a little bit of a break for everybody from Florida, kind of getting home and getting organized. But this week is kind of the start of the um, kind of outdoor circuit. So we'll have some it's more summer news. Season. Summer, summer season. season. We're excited. I can tell your, you yeah. when the test event's going to happen. Um, the test event if for dressage is going to happen, I think it's in April of next year. It's April 19th through the 22nd. It's going to be dressage and para at Tryon for the test event. Well, you know, guys, I always like to call my sister, who also is one of my coaches, but is around here very, very often helping me. Uh, Lindsay Cassie is going to come on the show this week. Lindsay is uh, a bronze, silver, and gold medalist and uh, was a silver medalist at the Young Rider Championships. So also a very, very good rider and trainer and has done some judging uh, in her life. And we're really excited to have her on uh, to talk about leg yields. This Nutrition Minute is brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products, the company that simplifies your search for research-proven nutritional supplements at kppusa.com. The horse that matters to you matters to Kentucky Performance Products. Managing horses can be challenging. Each horse's personality affects the way he behaves and reacts to the world around him. Horses with certain dispositions can be at higher risk for developing health problems than others. High-strung or excitable horses are easily stressed, but so is the timid, quiet warrior. Stressed horses are more likely to develop digestive upsets that lead to colic, diarrhea, and ulcers. Nalox Advanced was specifically developed to support a digestive tract that is under stress. It sustains proper pH levels, reducing the incidence of ulcers and hindgut imbalances, while simultaneously supporting the healing of damaged tissue. Nalox Advanced supports the complete digestion of starches and sugars and sustains populations of beneficial bacteria. Make life a little easier on your sensitive horse and start him on Nalox Advanced today. To learn more about the ingredients in Nalox Advanced, visit Kentucky Performance Products at kppusa.com. I am so excited to have my sister, but also a very, very good rider and trainer in her own right, Lindsay Cassidy on the program. Uh, And we're continuing our series uh, from the trainer's perspective and then to the judge's perspective. So, Lindsay, welcome to the show. No, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be on. 
we always love when you stop by. Glenn always wants to get more dirt on me, uh, which is <laughs> you pretty much know it all. But, um, you know, as everybody knows, that's close to us. Lindsay and I grew up riding together and um, Lind is, is a phenomenal rider and trainer and, and trains me every week on uh, Elin Court, or we call him Hello. So, uh, Lind, we're going to go sort of to the basics of leg yields and kind of with our trainer's hat on, you know, let's talk about a little bit about leg yields. When do you start leg yields and what are some things that you're looking for uh, as, you, as you go through? Right. Okay. Well, when I think about leg yield, I I can't think of of actually a more important exercise in all of dressage, but all all sorts of riding, even the jumpers. I think it's the most important exercise. It's the foundation for shoulder and later. Um, So it is really the most important stepping block. It still shows up in first level, I believe, first. And really nothing can progress until that is checked off the box as far as being, you know, ridden correctly and that the horse actually accepts the bridle and accepts the aid. So I think it's the most important exercise that starts everything. And also when I think about it, I think, and I, you, you all have to excuse me, but it's been March madness around here with basketball and Lexington, Kentucky. But, you know, when we think about either football or basketball, um, I think of defense and offense. And offense puts points on the board, which I think of as the inside rein and bending. However, your defense is always your outside rein and outside leg. So I think it's important. You need both to win the game (laughs) or in this case, win the points and win your test. So, um, and progress up the levels. So, you know, when, when I think of the aids for, um, leg yield, in particular, I think of the inside leg needs to be down. It needs to be allowing the horse to bend. The inside rein needs to be soft. And the horse is moving from your inside leg and weight and pushing to the outside rein and leg. And the outside rein and leg are kind of catching the horse. And I like to think of kind of the outside rein connection almost like a, like a good handshake. You know, I think everybody's experienced a handshake that's either too strong or too soft. And we all know when you shake somebody's hand, it's a good handshake. You're like, wow, you know, that's really nice. And I think of that as kind of the feeling you want to have in your outside rein at the end of your leg yielding. Yeah, no, that makes, that makes perfect sense. So when you say the feeling, so does that feeling stay once you get the feeling in the outside rein, or is it something that sort of, you have to reposition the horse to get? So that's a feeling that, that you want to maintain throughout, you know, the feeling in the outside rein should either, of course, when you're taking a half halt, be stronger and then be a little more passive as you're riding around corners and such. However, you know, it is, I think the leg yield is a great way to find out whether or not the horse is actually respecting your outside aids. We have all as trainers and riders and judges seen when the outside ring connection is not there and a horse kind of goes into the corner and they really just don't come out and they kind of take the rider in the corner and, you know, it's, it's just a complete mess. So in that moment, you know that those outside aids that should be reinforced by the leg yield and, you know, should be allowing the horse either to go or stop are no longer really there or helping. So we know there's a break in that connection. So that connection should always be there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So when you start talking about teaching leg yields, you know, what movements are you using or, or, or where, how do you start the leg yield? So as far as leg yield goes, I always think it's good, especially when you're teaching either a rider or a horse to take it down a notch to walk. You can always start and walk and that way you don't have speed as much of an issue as you do when you're trotting. So that way you can really talk to the rider about the aids of sitting through your inside leg and bending a little bit on the inside reins, becoming soft and accepting. And then you can have them to do a couple steps out. I think the best way to do it is to have them come in around you on about a 10 meter circle, giving yourself plenty of room and then allowing them to step out one step at a time or so uh, to the outside rein till you get to a 20 meter circle. But I think what's important is to make sure that they're stepping into the connection instead of just falling over to the outside. The circle is nice because it does give you a little bit of gravity to help you kind of pushing them out. Um, And also when you're a trainer, it allows you to have a little bit more um, 
connection to what's going on as well. You can kind of walk along, you can, you know, kind of hold an inside rein, soften it, you know, or hold an inside leg, soften an inside rein kind of to give them a feeling. And, um, you know, so I think that that's the best way to start it before you start on a straight line. And so what do you do? What happens when the horse does fall through that outside rein? You know, what is your reaction to that? How do you try and correct it? And, and how do you get back to what you were working on before? Absolutely. So I think sometimes what happens is a little bit, you know, either the rider doesn't have a great understanding about how much, you know, pressure needs to be, or the horse is just falling out. So again, I think that stepping out is important. I think that reinforcing that outside leg is a little bit behind the girth, not terribly behind the girth, because you're going to obviously be kind of somewhat asking for canner if you have your leg too far back but a little just behind the girth and I believe in the outside rein needs to be closed. So, so often I see people's fingers open. I see, you know, giving away that shoulder. And I think the important thing is to remember the connection, you know, to the elbow up your back, down the back of your back, kind of below your shoulder blades is kind of where that strength should be drawn and not a strong strength, but more of like a holding, almost like a hug kind of strength. You know, you're, you constantly feel them down your back right behind your shoulder blade. And that way you have a more complete and stronger line than you do if you're opening your hand and letting those reins go or that sort of thing. That's probably the thing I see the most is that people just don't remember to close their hand and keep that connection up your back. Yeah. It's yeah, true. I, see so- that too. I mean, or, or over rotating the shoulders to the inside when the, when the rider is using so much inside rein and so much inside leg, and now they've just let the outside go. So I like that visual that you were talking about about keeping you know your elbow into your side and your shoulder you know your outside shoulder drawn back as well you know so you're not you know everything that you do you don't want to overdo it right because it's not going to produce better results it's going to produce less balance so i think the the end goal is also is always kind of uh you know a balanced way and when you're practicing leg you in a circle over rotating the nose to the inside and pulling the horse to the inside is not going to get you where you want to go Absolutely. And I think that's the thing you see the most of anything. I think you can watch that in pretty much any warm up, you know, around the country. You just, I think there's so much overbending that goes on with leg yield. For sure. Or, or just kind of in general. Or, yeah. Yeah. In general. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So Linz, what do you do? I mean, we've talked about on the circle, but as you sort of think about going toward, mm-hmm. you know, uh, first level test two, where you sort of have that up the center line and the, the gentle meander to the side, you know, when do you kind of start say, okay, I'm going to come off the circle and I'm going to either take it um, from the center line to the rail or for the rail to the center line. What are some things that as a trainer from that perspective, you watch as you do that? Absolutely. So the one thing for sure, when you ride those circles and you come out to do your leg yield, um, you must ride straight first. So from a judge's perspective, you know, if, if you're just falling out of the circle, um, you know, you're, you, that's not the, the, the point of the exercise. So you really need to think about riding straight for a couple strides before you start your leg yield over. And I would say, too, when you train these tests, because you know the horses do them over and over, um, it's important to kind of stop, I would say, you know, we kind of riding off the boards about, you know, two, three feet off the boards to make sure that you're not – um, not losing the shoulder. Yeah, exactly. And, and I like to think even as you start training the leg yield from, well, both directions, but mainly from the center line to the rail, you know, the horses always want to fall toward the rail. And so sort of being able to ride two steps over, you know, two steps straight, two steps over, two steps straight so that you have really good control of the horses. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, and, I call that know, a little just, bit of a... Sorry, I was just going to say that's my sta- you know, my sta- uh, st- ladder exercise or, or like a set of stairs, right? That you're not just mm-hmm. over, 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 over because you'll get there so fast, but you won't have any sense of uh, forward energy or balance. Right. That's right. And I think it looks, you know, from a judge's perspective, if you come over right away, it's just, you know, it, it just shows that, you know, it's not necessarily that your aids are wrong, but it doesn't show the judge that you can ride straight as well. You know, right. they're still trying to make sure that you can control the outside rein and leg. And the so same concept. I think an imp- absolutely. And I was going to say an important tip, too, for somebody that's maybe learning and the horse does tend to fall out, is you can always move the, ri- the whip to the outside. 
you know, and, and just have it there on the side of the leg so that it is there to kind of reinforce the leg as you're starting to train this stuff. Yeah, that makes total sense. And so the same concept, right? If, if you're coming from the corner to the center line, it's the same idea, right? So that's that's always a complicated exercise in first level test three, where you come through the corner and have to leg yield from the corner to X and then X back to the corner. So what are some things that you can sort of help with that exercise? Because you have to change the bend in the first corner, change the outside rein to go from there. Sure. Obviously, you don't want to, you know, um, you don't want to give points away in your corner either. Um, you know, I always say those are free points and a good, uh, good way to set up for everything. So you want to ride your corner. If you're going to the left, you want to ride through your left corner with your left bend. Again, you want to get your straightening couple steps, establish your bend, sit through then the right leg and change the bend to the right and then come over. And again, like Philip was saying, kind of thinking about a stair step approach, a couple steps over, a little bit straight, a couple steps over, a little bit straight. And then when you're getting to the center line, again, straightening for a couple strides, again, sitting through your left leg then, changing the bend and coming back over, but making it very clear that you can establish the bend and that that works. Yeah. Um, for me, from a training perspective, so before we ever think about going to a horse show and doing this, I have my riders ride counter bend through the corners because mm -hmm. um, you find so many horses that just bury themselves in the corners and then on the wall, on the new long side, and you can never get them off the wall. So um, like I said, just for training and just, you know, as an exercise to practice, um, you know, to, to not ride your corners too deep, to have a little counter bend in there and then and then to make the leg yield from that, you know, just, you know, when you start doing this exercise, it's really helpful to not have to think about, you know, um, changing the bend and then doing the leg yield. If you've already got your bend set up with a counter bend through the corner, I think that helps so, so much that you're already set up to be moving away from the wall. And the horse ends up with a little bit better balanced uh, shoulder to help you to begin to get away from the wall. Now, I understand that in the test, this is a this is this is written this way. This is designed this way to test you whether, um, you know, you can have a little inside bend around the corner and then be able to change the bend. That shows that the horse is not just leaning on the outside shoulders. So that's sort of a there's a bit of a developmental stage there. And as you practice and train and ride this exercise to help the horse and to help yourself to uh, be able to be balanced enough to uh, to do this successfully. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think the most important thing is confidence with this whole exercise. So whether it's a young yeah. horse or a young rider, you know, or, or, you know, somebody that's just learning. Yeah. And that is an exercise you have to practice because the start is kind of the critical section of that. I think, you know, once, once they have the horse on the new outside rein, which would be, uh, you go actually from the left rein to the right rein, you have to have the horse on the new outside rein, which is the right rein, and you have to do it relatively quickly in that corner um, to have them moving over. So, you know, it's not just the leg yield, it's sort of being able to change your inside to your outside, you know, your inside leg and your outside leg pretty yeah. quickly, um, yeah. which I think is a tricky part of that movement in that test. I think in first level test two, where you come up the center line and you gently move over, that one's not as hard, but it, the, the, the question gets significantly harder in uh, first level test three. And I think as a judge, um, wouldn't you guys say, I mean, you see a lot of the shoulders uh, leading far too much, no haunches, or in reverse, the haunches leading in that exercise and no control, the shoulders. So I think that's from a judge's perspective, sort of something you have to be very careful of. Absolutely. And I think it's important to remember, again, when you're practicing, it's always okay to take it down to walk you know, and try it first at walk before you go to the trot. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I'll tell, I'll tell all the listeners a little secret is that this exercise comes back in four three when you have to do um, a canter half pass zigzag, or I call it zigzag. It's not a real zigzag line, but you have to um, half pass from the corner, flying change and half pass back to the wall in four three. So, you know, yeah. it's like everything you, you, you think like, oh, I can do that successfully. And now I'm done with it. It, it come back to bite you later on in life. And in this case, much later on in life. And then, you yeah. know, developing into pre St. George, yeah, where, George has similar. Yeah, where you go to the wall and back. And then the I one where it's actually a zigzag where you have three lines back and forth. So 
this thing, I mean, first level test three is so important, and this leg yield uh, zigzag exercise is is uh, really important and and you know good to practice all the time, even if you're riding a second level, third level, fourth level horse, because these are important concepts to be able to to have the horse between two legs and to be balanced and bent where you want, how you want, and to be able to maintain that forward energy and that flow of of uh, activity from the horse's hind legs and, and controlling the hind legs at the same time. Absolutely. I think, I actually think it's one of my favorite things to do with an FEI or, you know, a, a pre St. George and up horse, because I think that it gives them a lot of, it, it's very calming to them a lot of, in a lot of ways, you know, it yeah. just reestablishes everything. I think it's, it's a great way to get their joints moving and blood flowing, you know, even at walk, trot or canter. You know, it's um, it's just fundamental, and I don't think you can move on until it works. Yeah, and, right. and then and then you can develop it into exercises that help other movements. For instance, flying changes. For instance, um, you know, just your straightness problems or or, or your half fast problems. You can you can help everything with a bit of leg yield. So it's like you said at the beginning, a very fundamental movement. That that is gonna is just dressage, right? It's just about helping the horse move better to be more supple and to achieve the things that we're looking for. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, yeah. and and it's also testing, and we who haven't really said it, but just making sure that the horse is sort of laterally off your leg. You know, can you put your leg on, and will the horse move um, in an active fashion away from that leg? Um, and I think that's also one of the things that that you look for as you're training the leg yields. So. Absolutely. And it should be a step. It's the kind of the baby step to improving self-carriage, you know, that you truly can put them on the outside rein and, and make the horse rounder and a little bit more, um, you know, soft in the contact. So. Absolutely. So it's a great exercise and uh, one to sort of not miss. Well, Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on the program tonight. You're, you do such a phenomenal job, and, uh, and she does know every dark secret of mine. So, uh, but, <laughs> Lindsay, thanks so much for coming on the show. We always enjoy having you, and we look forward to next time. All right. That sounds wonderful. Fairfield Inn and Suites North by Marriott Lexington is the ideal hotel for you as they are the closest hotel to the Kentucky Horse Park. They have the most spacious guest rooms and suites in the area, and they're only four miles from downtown Lexington. Fairfield Inn and Suites North offers complimentary breakfast, free Wi-Fi throughout the hotel, free parking, a business center, an indoor swimming pool and jacuzzi, an outdoor patio with grill, laundry facilities, and much more. You get hungry, Cracker Barrel is located right next door, and there are four other dining options available within walking distance for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Of course, Lexington is known for the Kentucky Horse Park, University of Kentucky, Keeneland, and the historical Kentucky Bourbon Trail. Enjoy a terrific hotel experience while you're touring Lexington. There's no denying that the Lexington North Fairfield Inn & Suites is the best value in town and will meet all your hospitality needs. Just Google Fairfield in North Lexington and make your reservations today. This week's dressage training tip is brought to you by Total Saddle Fit, home of the shoulder relief girth at totalsaddlefit.com. We have an interesting trainer tip for this week's total saddle fit tip of the week. And what we're really going to talk about, we wanted, we started chatting and this is always a great time of year to think about sort of goal setting and, you know, where you're going to go with the horse show. But one of the things we haven't talked about is sort of when is it time to take goal setting and then reality to maybe you haven't reached that goal for the horse show. So what, well, I think that's, what, yeah, I think that's really yeah. interesting because, um, you know, I, I think we do a goal setting in the fall to say, okay, you know, show, show season's done. We were successful, not successful. This is what we need to do over the winter. I mean, this is what, you know, because we have no shows here, I always kind of have a little chat. Um, you know, this is what we need to do over the winter. This is what we'd like to accomplish. This is where we, we'd like to be in the next spring, but maybe we're here. We're spring. Have we achieved those goals? We need a reset to say, okay, where are we at now? Are we where we wanted to be? You know, 
if we're not, you know, maybe why, why is that? Where, where are we in reality? What should we be doing for the show season? So I think that's kind of what you're talking about, right? No, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And and I think sometimes, especially when there's a short term goal or you want to get up to a particular horse show or you need to qualify for something. And for whatever reason, let's say maybe the horse was a little off or you were ill or haven't been able to train as much as you would like, sometimes you really have to step back and say, why, maybe I'm not ready to go, and why is that? And I have sort of an unwritten rule here at the barn, and that is, number one, before you enter the horse show, you have to be able to go start to finish through the test. And I think that that's a good goal. Like you, sh- you have yeah, to be able to do the start. test. Yeah. But you, you know, there's sometimes where people are like, well, I really want to go to this horse show, and I really need to get a sixty percent for a bronze medal or something. So number one, my goal is, and my thing is, you have to be able to get a sixty percent in my mind, and you have to be able to ride the the test start to finish before you go to that horse show, and um, you you have to be honest at that point because there's sometimes when you're not honest with yourself or your friends like, Oh, you look great, whatever. And then you go to the horse show and you get hammered. And then you're like, well, why was that? And I think sometimes, you know, we all want to go to the Olympics or we all want to make regional championships or we all want to do whatever. But I think there's some point where you have to step back and say, okay, okay, maybe I need to reevaluate my goal. It doesn't mean anything. It just means, yeah, okay, this isn't going to work. And I think that's a good time when you have a very honest... This is the tough part in being a trainer, Reese, because sometimes we we have to be honest. Right. uh, And, you know, we we don't want to bring any negativity to the barn or to anyone's riding, but honesty from a trainer is such an important quality because, I mean, somebody who's nice to you and maybe is your friend and, you know... Is is maybe gonna have a a harder time being being truly, you know, one hundred percent like, hey, this is where you're at. You're not where you need to be to go to a show, mm-hmm. or you're not gonna you know, like if your goal is a seventy percent, this is not gonna happen, right? And so, um, ultimately, aren't they gonna be disappointed anyway? Yeah, right. right. That's what I. Th- that's what I think. Like, I am, I am super tough on my riders, especially the ones who are going to go to horse shows and who want to be competitive because like really honestly, if, if, if that's your goal, I'm going to get on your butt and you're going to, you're going to ride for me a 70% test before you go to a show or you're, you have no chance. Right. And so yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes I feel a little mean, but I, I would much rather be honest and a little bit mean than to, you know, to boost somebody up only to get, only to get, like you said, it will destroy in the ring, right? I don't think that's Besides, really not fun. Besides, you just saved him a thousand dollars in trophies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, if that's not your goal, if your goal is not to not to win, or if you have different goals, then we can talk about those. And you know, I've had those conversations recently as well. It's like, you know what? Especially those riders going from first level to second level. Like I always tell them, like you need two years. This is going to be a learning year. You're going to get you're going to get hammered a little bit with scores. And then everybody's okay. That's where the expectation is. And, you know, and they come out of the ring and they, you know, and they get their test back and they got a 59, 58, whatever, somewhere in there. It's like, okay, yeah, because we had a realistic expectation. And I say, you know, you got to pick on a few things that you can do well and that you want to score high on. And some of these things that you're having trouble with, you're not going to magically be able to fix it and and figure it out in the warm up ring before going in the ring. No, we got to have a little bit of a lower expectation for that. So, and, and then, you know, there's, there's a point where it's like, you know, maybe it's not that fun to get lower scores. So let's just stay home and train and let's, let's spend money and time and, 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 uh, resources on, on training so that when you do come out, you can ha- achieve the success that you really want. It's, you know, again, it's all a personal thing and, and you have to have these conversations, um, you know, and you have to feel like you, you have a really honest trainer because I, you know, not everybody is going to come to you with a little bit of that negative feedback. So do you ever get students that just have a cow who <laughs> just, you know, they threaten to fire you and because of this conversation? Um, you know what? I've never had that. 
Do you think that's Thank because goodness. you grew because of the way you are with them all along? Do you think you set the expectations yeah, I, correctly? Know, I, yeah, I think that. Um, I don't know. It's just sometimes my perception of things, and it can be totally wrong. But I think, like, it's just good that you know it's you and I. But um, you know, woman with woman, you know, those kinds of lessons, it tends to get a little, you know, you know, you were friends, we're friends, and like I, I never, you know, I, I there's, there's always a kind of a, a bit of a line there. You know, do you understand what I mean? Oh, I know exactly what you mean, and you that, see it all the time. Always, yeah. I, I try not to cross over into the, you know. The client well, friend friends. relationship. I, I yeah. would call my students friends, but it it never gets confusing. But they're still students. Right. So I always have a bit of the authoritative, you know, tone, and and the lessons are that way, and that's I think I'm just kind of that way, so that when that information gets dealt, it comes from a place of, you know, me trying to help. It's it's never like a negativity, like. Uh, you know what I mean? I so think I, I do I, because I think when... I never have that situation. You know where it's like you know, somebody blows up about that. I think, you know, all, you know, I think all along and, you know, sort of every day I try and have a, a bit of a checkup with everybody. Like, this is where we're at. This is where we want to be. This is where we're going next time I come back. Here's a bit, bit of homework, you know, so it's never a surprise. Like I, and I don't think it's a surprise. Like this is not going well, or this is not where we want it to be. I think, you know, people are honest with themselves. They, they can, they get that. Right. And, and it's always good to be rechecking goals and, and, and knowing, um, uh, you know, every day where where we're at and where where we need to go and and how we, I know I mean sometimes there's been a little bit of friction about you know maybe you shouldn't go to that show or maybe this isn't the level for you, but I think everybody wants to succeed and I'm only trying to help with that. So yeah, sometimes you have to um, hold hold people back a little bit from progressing through the levels to make sure that they're achieving you know the 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 ideals of dressage and the training correctly and the horses are. Uh, in the in a strong place, rather than we don't like to overface horses and riders because that's a disaster. So I think it comes from a positive place, even though sometimes it's a negative message. Where you see that whole friend uh, relationship thing cross over and really get people into trouble is people who run boarding stables. Yes, uh, absolutely, absolutely. It's hard not to. I mean, we ran a boarding stable for a long time. These people do become your friends, but then it's really hard when you have to lay down the law and say, hey, look, you know, your, your, your place is a mess. You're not paying your bill, whatever. Um, yeah. That makes that a whole lot harder. And then on both ends, yeah, on both ends, right? right? Like I've seen, because my family ran a boarding stable for many years, um, I have definitely seen that situation. And it's been very, and, and, and again, on both ways, where, the 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 border friend is like you know I really need this done or that done, and yeah it it can be very messy and very confusing and and, and yet it's a hard better. thing too because you want the people that are at your barn you want it to be that kind of friendly place right yeah uh, so but it's hard then when the hard things have to happen which they always do uh, yeah that's where the friction comes in and then of course then everybody taking sides and then you have a mess at your barn and it it yeah. happens to every barn it happened to yours I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I don't know. Um, I, but see, the thing is, I don't know that there's an answer to that one. I really no, don't. No, there isn't. I don't, yeah, that's, that's not my area of expertise. Yeah. <laughs> this tip was brought to you by Total Saddle Fit, the shoulder relief girth that Reese and Philip both love. And here's why. The Saddle Fit solution you have been waiting for is finally here. TotalSaddleFit.com is proud to introduce the shoulder relief girth. This strategically shaped girth actually moves the girth line of your saddle back over one inch, thereby freeing your horse's shoulders from the saddle. Traditional girths pull saddles up against a horse's shoulders and often over the top of the shoulders. The shoulder relief girth's recessed ends allow for the billets to buckle into the girth farther back to give your horse unparalleled freedom of motion. We are so certain that your saddle will fit better and your horse will be more comfortable that for a limited time we are offering a 30-day, 110% money-back guarantee. If you are not totally satisfied with your shoulder relief girth, send it back for a full refund plus 10% of the purchase price. Don't wait. Order now for the best saddle fit solution available. At totalsaddlefit.com. Visit totalsaddlefit.com. 
Well, yeah. uh, that's it for today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here on the Dressage Radio Show. Don't forget, you can listen to all shows, all 13 of them on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com, or you can go to the App Store, and you can find Horse Radio Network in the App Store, and the Dressage Show is one of those shows in there. So <laughs> it's the simplest and easiest way. 33% of our listeners now listen on our app. So it's it's growing. It's just every, so easy. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Growing every day. And of course, you have a Facebook page, huh, Philip? Yeah, we're always looking for uh, feedback on our Facebook page or questions or, you know, comments about the shows, stuff you like. So, uh, yeah, just visit us on, fa- on Facebook. Um, you're also on Twitter. I never tweet i don't even have yeah Twitter. we have and twenty thousand followers <laughs> on twitter okay um but you know what we don't do as much as we should on twitter uh, we we post a lot because it's tied to facebook so there's a lot of posts going on over there but i apologize to all the twitter people who i probably haven't answered in six months oh my bad you can find reese at okay. maplecrestfarmky.com or you can email her at reese at horseradionetwork.com thanks to our sponsors a question collections kentucky performance products and the fairfield inn in lexington kentucky we'll see you all next week at rolex for those of you that are coming we're looking forward to meeting and don't forget to keep your heels down your shoulders back and we'll talk to you in two weeks <laughs> <laughs>